Hey, what's going on? Uh, this is Patrick, Patrick Woods, uh, fingerstyle guitar player, acoustic guitarist, and electric guitarist. And uh, today I just wanted to go through maybe and talk about some of my influences and what really uh, I was influenced by when I was younger and growing up and what kind of integrated uh, all my techniques into one and kind of was the fabric of my music. So. Um, I got a stack of CDs right here, about seven of them, and there's, I had to really narrow it down because uh, there's so many, I have so many influences and there's so many great players out there that I admire, but these top seven, if somebody had to hold a gun to my head, which hopefully will never happen, but if they did, these top seven right here would be, I would, I would narrow it down to my most influential albums that really inspired me to pick up an acoustic guitar and, and play this uh, fabulous, amazing style that we call finger style. So uh, anyway, I'm just gonna go through them, uh, rate them uh, seven to one, uh, seven through number one, and just talk about a little bit about what I like about each album and how it really uh, influenced me and uh, what how it kind of maybe some of these sounds made my uh, made its way into my own music. So I'm just going to start with this one right here. This is uh, Justin King, um, guitarist from Oregon. Some of you may know who he is, some of you may not. But um, this this album is about actually about 20 years old. And uh, it's called Le Bleu. And uh, it's, it was really, it was it really made a lot of impact in the fingerstyle community when it came out about 20 years ago. It came out, uh, yeah, 2001. So, and there's a 19 tracks, all of it, just some of the most diverse uh, fingerstyle playing you'll ever come across. I mean, there's Irish jigs, there's like Latin American stuff, there's um, the, you got the percussive guitar, you got kind of more of an old, uh, songs that have more of an old folk feel. Um, uh, kind of, some of it's kind of new age, some of it's uh, just a little jazzy. You you got the, all of that in this album. This is this is a true one of a kind finger style album. Unfortunately, after this, he didn't make any other other albums like this. I think he kind of went more singer songwriter or something like that. But uh, you know, the the just the stylistically, just him being all over the map is what makes this album so great. And um, yeah, so that's number that's number, that would be number seven. So the next next in line is uh, Richard Leo Johnson, Fingertip Ship. Some of some of you might ha might remember when this puppy came out. It came out in the late nineties. This is nineteen ninety eight, and he's a twelve string player. Aren't a lot of twelve string players in the finger style community? You know, most of a six string or harp guitar or something other. But uh, he was one of the the great twelve string. Uh, musicians in finger style and when this thing hit when this thing came out it was just unbelievably jaw-dropping no I had never heard anything like this and still have never heard anything like it I mean he's he's just doing stuff crazy crazy stuff that no one no one else does and if you if you hear the first track you'll, you'll know what I'm talking about very quickly this thing just blew my mind I heard this one night uh, about 20 years ago at a Borders when they had those Used to, the border, the borders bookstores used to have those listening stations where you could listen to different different CDs. Well, this is this. I put this on and I immediately just bought it. I didn't have a lot of money at that time, but I immediately just uh, went for the purchase. I couldn't walk out of the store without this. This is just one of a kind, mind blowing finger style album uh, from Richard Leo Johnson. Uh, I don't really know what became of this guy after this album. He kind of just disappeared. From the music business, I think the last I heard, he just got fed up with the music business and just decided to retire from it completely, which is, you know, disappointing for people like me. But I can understand. Uh, as we all know, the music business has its own. <laughs> it's it's a maze. It's just uh, it's it's a land of bullshit, as we all know. So that's that's I can't blame him for wanting to leave the music business but I, I really hope he puts other music out sooner or later if, any, if anybody knows what happened to this guy just uh, just let me know <laughs> all right uh, moving on uh, mm, 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 this is number five 
uh, Pierre Bin Suzanne. Uh, if any of you fingerstyle players out there do not know who Pierre Bin Suzanne is, shame on you, because he's one of the greats. He's one of the pioneers. Um, if you don't, haven't heard of him, go check him out. This is probably one of his finest albums. In fact, uh, I, I, I know that he's released other albums with like orchestras or maybe some kind of an accompaniment somewhere, but uh, this to me is one of his best albums. Um, and he has a song on here, a tribute to Michael Hedges, the late great Michael Hedges, called "So Long, Michael." And it's probably one. It's the single most I think beautiful guitar ballad that I've ever heard. Um, just the way he is phrasing his the melody, everything is just so perfect. It's just ingenious what he's done with his particular style. And there's no one, there's no other player like Pierre. He's he's, he's just so fluid, so human, um, just a raw, genuine. Um, just uh, just the warmth that he produces and the depth and the substance that he has in his phrasing and his technique and just his overall sense of melody and uh, harmony um, there's no there's no one out there like this guy and uh, you're gonna hear me say that repeatedly about a lot of different players but uh, this is uh, this is top-notch if you don't have it get it all right so moving on here Will Ackerman, Sound of Wind and Driven Rain. Now, um, I love all of Ackerman's stuff. Uh, you know, his early stuff with the Wyndham Hill and, and all that. But there was something about this particular one. I, I don't know what it, what it is exactly. Um, but there's something about this particular album that just, just took me to another universe. And it still does. It's one of those, it's kind of like reading a great novel. Uh, you know, the, the secret to a great novel is the subtext. You know, it's one of those things that just stays with you long after you read it. And this is kind of like the same kind of deal. It just stayed with me long after you listened to it. There's just something about this thing that just swallows you up. It just uh, kind of uh, pulls you into another dimension, another universe. I don't know how, exactly how to explain it, but that's what it did to me, and it still does. Uh, one of my absolute favorites. And it, and that's uh, his uh, Ackerman's way of really just his simplicity and the melodies he produces kind of found its way somewhat into my style. Uh, there's I have moments where I'm kind of borrowing from Ackerman, from Ackerman. Don't even even know it. I don't even know that that's a good thing or a bad thing. Probably a good thing. So number three, Leo Kaki, guitar music. Now. I, I first heard this is this was actually the very first fingerstyle album that I heard when I was a kid. My dad had it on vinyl, and this thing just I played it constantly. And the, that whole first side uh, called Side One Sweet is probably some of the most ingenious composition that's ever been written for a twelve-string guitar. And if those for those of you who have heard this album, you know what I'm talking about. You know, there's lots of great finger uh, twelve-string guys out there. You know. Uh, but uh, you know Leo Kaki, obviously he is he is like the top top level guy for that. I don't have many of Leo's albums, but this this just somehow did it for me. Um, when I first heard this, it, it totally inspired me to pick up an acoustic guitar, and probably was one of the main reasons why a twelve string was actually the first guitar I ever I, I learned on. I learned on a twelve string probably because of this guy because I heard this album so much, and. Um, I just wanted to be like this guy so bad. So <laughs> that's a, I learned on a 12 string, then I moved to six string and electric and other, other things. Um, number two, Aerial Boundaries, Michael Hedges. All of you, who, who, you knew this was coming, right? You knew this was coming. There, there's no comparison when it comes to Michael Hedges. Uh, he is, he's a legend. He's like the Jimi Hendrix of acoustic guitar. Um, obviously passed away, uh, I think, in the late 90s or early 90s, somewhere in there. Um, very sad that we don't have him with us anymore, but uh, obviously any any of you who don't know who Michael Hedges is, double shame on you. <laughs> because this guy started it all. He really did. Uh, with, uh, I mean, it, he's, he, any, anything, any comparison you want to make, the, the Jimi Hendrix of acoustic, the Eddie Van Halen of acoustic, maybe, uh, but however you want to phrase it, 
uh, this guy was the was the true pioneer of the modern what we call modern uh, finger style. And so Michael Hedges uh, had that wrapped up in all this one album. Uh, the three, uh, the three. I heard this first for the first time when I was 18. A friend of mine introduced me to Michael Hedges. I had no idea who he was. And when we started playing this album, when I first heard it, obviously uh, it was mind blowing and just so joyous at the same time. And the three standout tracks on out of, on this album to me are Aerial Boundaries, Rickover's Dream, and Rag Muffin. Aerial Boundaries, you can't beat that. That's, that's unbeatable. You can't get better than that. You just can't. So, um, yeah, Michael Hedges, huge, uh, huge influence. Number one, some of you might already guess, Preston Reed. This album is called Metal. Um, obviously not heavy metal, but influenced by heavy metal, obviously, uh, for a very good reason. Uh, Preston Reed, the first time I, I heard his stuff was actually on a compilation disc of different fingerstyle players and I heard his song Slap Funk for the first time which some of you probably have heard and it just it was the first time of you know before I um, I heard Preston Reed I obviously heard Michael Hedges and Leo Cocky when I was younger and I, I wasn't a fingerstyle player then I, I, I experimented with rock and classical and a bunch of different styles but this is the first this guy was the first time I ever I, that I heard his music and it inspired me to actually try it myself and that's that was the whole beginning of the venture into fingerstyle music and me learning to my own tunes and writing my own tunes and learning my own technique um, you know I uh, it, it's kind of funny this his per percussion uh, Preston's percussion technique was obviously I years before I saw him do it I was hearing it and I didn't want to copy from him and I was always afraid that I copied from him but the, the funny thing is when I finally saw him do it uh, on on video I was su very surprised because it was nothing like I had done it <laughs> to my relief so I didn't copy from him as much as I thought because I was just hearing it and 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 doing what I thought he was doing it turned out he was doing something completely different than what I was doing so I, I think by now uh, I've, I've forged my own technique, my own style as a player, but Preston uh, will always have a special place in my heart simply because he was the guy who got me going on this style. Before that I heard Hedges and I loved Hedges, but I was like, well, I could never, I don't know if I could do that, you know. But Preston was the guy who was like, I got to do that, you know. So, and I think uh, there many other players will say the same thing about him. He's very underrated. But the, the reason why I think that he is an important figure in the, in the fingerstyle community is that he was, he, he basically took what Hedges was doing to the next level. Uh, Michael Hedges kind of opened the, the gateway or the door and kind of um, took what he was hearing and he just kind of opened that space, opened that universe for all of us to come into. And Preston Reed was one of the first that walked through that door and said, "I'm going to take this to the next level. I'm going to do my thing. I'm going to, I'm going to really see what this guitar, this acoustic guitar, with all of its possibilities, can really be about." And since Preston, there's people who have taken it to even higher places. I mean, you know, Andy McKee and Mike Dawes and you know Don Ross. I mean, uh, the pool is at this point is uh, pretty endless. So that's uh, that's about as far as I want to. Talk today about influences. Uh, there's I have there's tons of uh, obviously of other great guitarists, fingerstyle players out there. But I I honestly feel that these seven right here, it's where I can narrow it down to say the most um, that directed me uh, towards picking up an acoustic guitar and learning fingerstyle, and all of it had all and all of these guys have some somehow found its way into the fabric of my own music, and. Um, where I can take those influences and make it my own. So that's basically all I wanted to share today. And uh, like I said, there are other so many great players, even uh, personal friends of mine, who have released albums that I think are just some of the best albums ever made. And that'll be another video for another day. But um, just want to thank you all for watching, and uh, I'll be back. We'll see ya.